Welcome to the Rule of Life podcast. Today, we're gonna hear a story of how the practice of generosity shows up in the everyday lives of real people. Now, Jesus warns us to watch out for greed. So here's a story of what it's like to live that out with Sonny Grover. Hi, my name is Sonny Grover, and my family and I have been deeply impacted by this practice of generosity. Grew up born and raised in India, New Delhi, India. My wife and I have two boys. Uh, Ethan is 13, Liam is nine. Was in India till I was in 10th grade. Uh, and then my folks decided to move to the US, to Portland, Oregon. Went to a very small, went to Oregon State University in a small town called Corvallis in Oregon. At that university, uh, came to be a believer in Jesus through just conversations with my roommate. And then started going to church, became a management consultant, consulted for a variety of companies. One of them was Nike, joined Nike full time in 2016. Probably the most salient conviction came from the pastor of the church that I came to faith at. The senior pastor was an engineer at Hewlett Packard and then felt like God was calling him to do something different. So not someone that went to a big theology school or had big, you know, deep context in theology, et cetera. But he always used to say, your pocketbook is a good reflection of your faith because in our day and age, in our society, money is the most tangible asset that someone has. So what they do with their money is a good reflection of what they value. So people can say a lot about what they value, but when you see how people spend their money, you start to get a good sense for what they really value. And for whatever reason, that conviction took root really deeply for me. So that was one piece, I think, of my formation. And the other piece of my formation was thinking about tithing. The senior pastor always used to say, people need to stop thinking they're giving 10% of their church. They need to start thinking, God's allowing you to keep 90% of his money. But it really helped me think about like, you know, like the Bible says, what do you have that you did not receive? So if I look at what I can generate as my income, very little of that has to do with me because my capabilities are a gift from God and my job is a gift from God and the context in which I operate is a gift from God. Like there's nothing I bring to the equation. You know, in that context with my family even, our entire framing is around God is blessing us and our job is to be a conduit. And finances are the most tangible way that that becomes real. Somewhere along the way, and I can't really pinpoint when or why or how, I developed this conviction that I want to give more than I keep. And then that, and I'm an engineer by training and I'm a very methodical person. And for me, that manifests itself in every year as a family, we try to give one more percent of our gross income. Because again, the Bible teaches tithe is not really a New Testament thing. Living generously is a New Testament thing. And I don't like, there's no science around that. So we continue to go, well, how can more and more of our, if, if I marry the biblical concept of generosity to this idea that I'm a conduit, then over time, hopefully God blesses us enough that more and more goes out. And so it started with tithing to our local church. Uh, and then it became, you know, giving to things like practicing the way to a local food pantry, to the Portland Rescue Mission, to an organization called Remember New that fights child trafficking, to the Bible Project. And so we've just found these ways, many associated with faith and many not. But in our, in my psyche, it's all God is giving me these funds and I want them to be used to do good things in the world that are aligned to his kingdom and my values. It's funny when I talk to people who have been on this practicing the way journey, for a lot of people, generosity looks like, you know, we bring groceries to neighbors who don't have enough food or we host people in our home that to Jesus's point of like, invite people who can't pay you back. We do those things, but I have never framed them as generosity in my own head. In my own head, generosity has been framed as for lack of a better way of putting it, formalized giving to kingdom-related causes. Uh, and that's the thing that I measure. Like, I don't measure how much of my grocery budget goes to feeding people who we've invited over for dinner and opening up our home. Like, th there's this weird uh, blurry line between hospitality and generosity. And 
for better or worse, in my framing, generosity has been much more formal. So there's a law in engineering that says anything you measure improves. And anything you measure and report improves really fast. And that's for better or worse, why I've, you know, we, we, we have a spreadsheet, we use it to manage our budget. And when I became intentional about this, I was like, well, how am I doing? And I started measuring it. And that it, it becomes a self-driving engine of um, motivation. It's, it's no different than my personal best in running or my lifting weight or what, you know, my, am I eating healthy? Like, how do you know you're doing well if you're not measuring? If you want the life of Jesus, you have to adopt the lifestyle of Jesus. And when you look at Jesus, he lived his life very intentionally. And in, in all these different ways that we now are calling practices. And so how do I know that I'm practicing something if it's casual, if it's not measured? Part of my faith journey was seeing the kingdom of God break into places and spaces that wouldn't claim it, but it's still people who are made in God's image have those needs that need to be met and they should be met in a way that God would have desired it. Giving to Oregon State on paper has nothing to do with the kingdom of God, but giving to Oregon State has a lot to do with the kingdom of God when I designate it as like someone is going to want to go to college and they're not going to have money to do it. And I don't know what they believe, if they believe, whatever they believe, but I feel like this is something that I can do to bless someone in this world. And so I think that uh, local food pantry, right, that has nothing to do with Christianity at all. It's just a place where homeless or people that are less fortunate come and just pick up groceries for free. And in some places where I give, I ask myself a question like, as a steward of Jesus's resources, how am I assessing the ROI on this? Like, are, is this ministry effective in what they're trying to do? And I need to do more than just give it my money. Like I'm accountable before God to see that this money is put to good use and it accomplishes in the world what we're... So I think the stickiness again is the wrong word, but there's been this maturing of my generosity practice to go like, it starts with giving dollars, but that's not where it can end. There's a lot that comes after that. I love this language of invitation very deeply. Because I feel like we're all on a journey to become more like Jesus. And there's going to be parts of this journey that are easy for us. And there's going to be parts of this journey that are really hard for us. And Jesus has promised us that he's going to walk with us. And he's not going to leave us in that journey alone. Like it's not a puzzle for us to self-solve. And if it's really hard for you to part with your money right now, do the smallest thing you can in a way that feels like an invitation to come one step closer to Jesus from where you are today. When I give generously, I feel the pleasure of God. It doesn't feel like a duty, an obligation, uh, something I have to do. Whatever that practice is for you, and however many of those there are, do those. Because you're evolving and God's grace is shaping you. And in that journey, other practices will become easier. If you feel fear and guilt, man, like pray about it and just step back for a second. Like don't feel like this pressure of this thing that you have to do. Because that's not Jesus' heart at all. Giving for me started with, came to, came to faith in a church that was, uh, you know, give 10% to your local church. And I just bought into that. Uh, and many people don't start there, but that's where I started. Like I was earning and with every dollar that I earned, 10% of it went to my local church. And then by God's grace, my income started to grow and simplicity was a huge practice for me. And, it, you know, my wife is into simplicity. And so we adopted that. And maybe I'm a bit more extreme than she is, but we, we're not people that just want to spend everything we have. So we, we started going, well, our income is going up more than we need. How about we, how about we start giving more? And because I'm an engineer, I just created this like mental model of like, well, every year we'll just try to increase our giving 1%. And there's no like, there's no guilt in that. Like if we can't do it, we can't do it, but let's just go on this journey. And so that was one aspect of our giving. Like every year by God's grace now, we've been able to give 1% more of our gross that we bring in as a, as a family, as an income. And then the other part has been, we've gone beyond giving to our local church by God's grace. We've found these other avenues. Some of them have to do with, you know, things that are very overtly associated with the Christian faith. So nonprofits like Practicing the Way, 
And other things have to do with places where kingdom of God needs to break in, whether that's, you know, we give to a scholarship fund at a local university and we give to a, a food pantry in Portland and things of that nature. So I think that's how our practice has grown over the years. And even this to this day, my wife and I openly discuss, like, can we do it another year? And how, like uh, guilt never and like obligation never enters the conversation. Like God's been so gracious to us that we, I don't have a number that I want to hit and I'm not going to lose a lot of sleep if one year I go backwards. Uh, we just want to give as much and always have a mental attitude of like, we want to bless others. We want to give as much as we can. I think probably the biggest change for me as a result of how we choose to exercise this practice of generosity is I think about my career very differently. Like I'm not motivated by making more because what I'm making is not tied to spending on myself. So in many ways, you know, and this is not wrong. This is just a, how people think. In many ways, people's income is just naturally tied to, I want a better car. I want a bigger home. I want a better vacation. And I want those things too. But I think that th that, that accelerator is way milder in my life. Like I just think of, because so much of my wiring is around like, how can I give more? And so that changes how I approach. Like if, you're, if your expenses are framed differently, then your income can be framed very differently. I think that's probably the simplest way to, that I can think about putting it. That's the, like the, the most pragmatic and practical change. I think on a deeper level, I think following Jesus in this way, of course, has brought me closer to Jesus. Like I, again, like I said, I feel his pleasure when I give. I feel like, you know, this, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Like I feel that deeply in the act of giving.